Hey guys, it's Luke. I just dropped off the Jeep Wrangler I was reviewing and picked up the Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack. I came back with the keys, saw Shane, and I knew that he had the Scat Pack. And I was like, hey Shane, do you think I could take that out for review? And his response is literally, F it throws me the keys and he's like, you have an hour because this is my personal test car and I'm leaving at four. So I apologize that this isn't gonna be the biggest review out there, not the most shots and the content's gonna be pretty crammed since I'm trying to speed up the process here, but I am fortunate enough to be behind the wheel of this beast and let's get this show on the road. So starting with the styling, it looks pretty much the same as any other Challenger, which is to say it looks badass. These cars are total nostalgia pieces. The grill up front and the headlights hark back to lad of the cars in the 60s and 70s, the Challengers back then. You move on to the sides and you have that awesome, uh, the awesome silver like graphite wheels with Brembo brakes at all four corners. You also have the Super B badge, which is really nice. It harks back to the old Super Bs and is a total nostalgia piece that everyone that buys these cars are going to love. Now, when you move on to the side of the car, you'll notice just how long this thing is. But before I get into that, listen to this. Oh my God, yeah, this thing rocks. But as I was saying, you move on to the side of this car and you realize just how long it is because this is based on the same platform as the Charger. So you have these really long side doors and when you move on to the back, the rear end screams retro 60s muscle car. I love it. Those rear taillights totally hark back to the older taillights from the late 60s Challenger, early 70s Challenger. And I absolutely love the look. It also has a really nice deck lid spoiler that is great looking and dual exhausts, which sound amazing as you would expect. Now, when you look under the hood of the Scat Pack, you'll realize, you know, this isn't the regular 5.7 liter, 370 horsepower Hemi that's in the RT. That's for lightweights, that's for wimps. If you're a real man, let's say you don't want to blow 65 grand on a 707 horsepower Hellcat, but the 370 horsepower 5.7 is just a bit too wimpy. You can get the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 that we have here with 485 horsepower. Now you can get that engine mated with an eight speed automatic, which is the most common, or you can have what I have here, a six speed manual. Now with the automatic, you'll go from zero to 60 in about 4.2 seconds, which is fast. But with the manual, it's gonna be a little bit longer, but get the manual. It's an amazing transmission. I thought the clutch was gonna be vague and that the throws are gonna be really long, but This transmission is a joy to shift. The clutch is not that bad to use. The throws are, not the throws, the travel on the clutch is really short and the engage point is exactly where you would expect it to be. It's very easy to use. I hopped behind the wheel and was driving it like a pro the very first second. And the shifter, the throws look like it's gonna be really long because the boot in the whole shifter area is so large, but they're actually pretty short throws and they're really direct. I'm really blown away by how nice this transmission is to use. It's not like you're wrestling a beast. It's actually a really fun transmission and you can rev match really nicely because this engine has pretty good throttle response. Just like that. And of course you have that insane baritone manly exhaust note that just blares every single time you hit the gas. <laughs> Now power delivery is a little interesting. It's very linear since it's a naturally aspirated engine, but it really doesn't come alive until you floor it above 3,500 RPM. Yeah, there's torque everywhere, but above 3,500 RPM, that's where this engine starts to scream and you really get thrusted back into your seat. Now the handling of this car is what you would expect. This car is tubby, 4,000 pounds, but I mean, I'm not gonna say it handles bad. The body roll is pretty limited. Like, 
and the tires grip really well. So you feel like you're really holding on and planted to the road. But one thing I will definitely say is that this isn't a type of car that you're gonna want to force through corners at a high rate of speed. Let's compare it to the Porsche real quick. That car dances through corners. You feel that 50-50 weight distribution and you feel like you can just thread the needle and just absolutely fly through turns. With this thing, you feel like you're wrestling a beluga whale. Um, around turns. It's, I mean, will it do it? Yes, it's like a beluga whale on slicks. It's super grippy and it'll hold on and there's not that much body roll, but is it the most fun thing to do? Not, not really, no, to be brutally honest with you. This car is meant for a quarter mile drag strip, late nights on the drag strip with your homies racing for pink slips. That's what this car is all about. Now, I really wouldn't recommend racing for pink slips with this thing because it costs $40,000, which considering the performance that you get, 485 horsepower and all the features, it's really not bad at all. Let's start talking about those features, by the way. Um, this car here has the big boy 8.4 Uconnect touchscreen, heated and ventilated seats. It's one of the best touchscreen interfaces in the business, really. You control everything through it. These seats are great. Like I said, they're heated and cooled. They're great for bolstering. The bo seat bottom bolstering could be a bit more aggressive, but on the sides here, the side bolstering, it's really good. They're very adjustable. I love the cloth inserts here with the leather surround. And this whole interior is actually really high quality. The dash is soft touch. I really like the look. It's dark in here for sure with all the black, but oh my God. I. Oh, I, I'm trying to tell you guys information here, and then I floor it, and all of that just goes out the window because that engine sounds so good. Is it scary fast? If you're used to driving fast cars, no, it's not scary fast by any means. It's very, very controllable, very easy to manage, which is something I wasn't expecting at all. I was expecting this thing to be really quite a bear to drive, and it's just not. More things about the interior. These seats are stupid comfortable. It's like sitting in a lounge chair, a very supportive lounge chair. This interior has nice leather wrapped door panels and center console here. The stitching's nice, leather wrapped steering wheel. It's just a really nice place to spend time. It's a good grand touring car just for booking it across the country at a very high rate of speed. Now, man, it's time for another pull. God, oh, <laughs> that just doesn't get old. This thing may not be a cornering machine, but the sheer muscle, the noise, shifting this transmission, oh, it's just such an awesome experience. <laughs> oh, that torque just slams you. Oh, it's awesome, guys. It's, I, I keep saying awesome, but that's really what this is like. I mean, like I've been saying, not a sports car, not a sports car by any means, but freaking amazing barnstorming fast grand touring machine that oozes American muscle. That's exactly what this thing is. And it has all the features you would want, like the display in the middle here. It has um, your speedometer. It has, man, it tells me my oil life, like performance pages. You have that whole setup. So you can literally time your zero to 60s and eighth mile, quarter mile. All of that stuff is available here. I'm getting an average of 12.7 MPG, which actually isn't as terrible as I was expecting. And yeah. It's just, this thing has so many features. It's really fast, it's comfortable. It's, I wouldn't call it quiet, but there's not a whole lot of road and wind noise. And for 40 grand, damn. I, I really don't see how you could go wrong with this thing if all you want is something that's gonna be stupid fast and ooze personality. And that's one thing we need to talk about is the personality of this thing. Imagine, so let's put it this way. Ferrari's the sophisticated man in the suit. He's sitting over at the bar, sipping a gin and tonic, having a sophisticated conversation about some business with his partner. And then Bert walks into the bar, rips off his shirt, starts pounding his chest, starts chugging beers. That's what this car is. That is exactly what this car is. It's like all of being like restrained and classy and all that. I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs and up. That's what this car is like. And it is such a personality for that. How could a car that sounds like this not have personality? Oh, 
Oh, I'm so gonna get pulled over with this thing. <laughs> oh my God, guys, I'm really sorry I couldn't put together a more cinematic and informative review, but I really didn't have the time. Shane needs his car back in five minutes, and luckily for me, I'm five minutes out. But this is, think of it as a power review. You get to watch me have way too much fun doing what I love best, which is reviewing cars, driving cars, geeking out over cars. One thing I will say is, this car with the automatic may be really smooth and still a boatload of fun. Get it in the manual. Get it in the manual. I cannot ex express that enough. This thing with a manual is stupid fun because you shift gears, you slam the gas, you hear that awesome noise, and when the noise runs out, you shift into another gear. And it's just part of the experience. You can't get this thing with an automatic. You just can't. Please, get the stick shift. We need to save the, save the manuals. I can't, I can't drive a car that's not stick. Maybe I'm a bit too addicted to stick shift, but man, this thing with a stick is just stupid, stupid fun. See, now when you're just putting around in the thing, yeah, you have that exhaust note, but that adds to the experience. And it's just so smooth and relaxing. Like this is a car I could drive every day. This is a good daily driver in my opinion. I might get contradicted on that, but I personally think that this is a really good daily driver. Okay guys, well, I have to return the car now. I'm about to pull up to um, World Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Thank you, Shane, so much for letting me review this thing. It was a quick review, that's for sure, but damn was this an experience. <laughs>